Today, breakthrough therapy designations in lung cancer, a fast track designation in lung cancer, an approval sought in breast cancer, and highlights from the 2019 World Conference on Lung Cancer. Welcome to Enclave News Network, I'm Gina Columbus. The FDA has granted a breakthrough therapy designation to Capmadenib as a first line treatment for patients with MET Exxon 14 skipping mutated non-small cell lung cancer. The decision is based on primary findings from the Phase II Geometry Mono 1 study in which capmatinib showed a 67.9% objective response rate by independent review in treatment-naive patients with MET Exxon 14 altered NSCLC. In pretreated patients, the ORR by independent review with capmatinib was 40.6% and the disease control rate was 78.3%. The ORR by independent review was 67.9% for treatment-naive patients, and the DCR was 96.4%. Results also show that the median duration of response was 9.72 months in pretreated patients and 11.14 months in those who received the agent up front. The median progression-free survival was 5.42 months in the pretreated group and 9.69 months for those treated in the frontline setting. Novartis, the developer of Capmatinib, stated in a press release that the regulatory filing for the MET inhibitor with the FDA will take place in the fourth quarter of 2019. Also in lung cancer, the FDA has granted a breakthrough therapy designation to Tapotinib as a treatment for patients with metastatic non-small cell lung cancer harboring MET exon 14 skipping alterations who have progressed on prior platinum-based chemotherapy. The designation is based on data from the ongoing Phase II vision trial in which Tapotinib demonstrated an objective response rate of 50.0% as assessed by an independent review committee and an investigator assessed ORR of 55.3% in patients with MET exon 14 altered NSCLC that was identified by liquid biopsy. For patients who are identified to have MET exon 14 alterations via tissue biopsy, the IRC and investigator assessed ORRs were 45.1% and 54.9% respectively. Results show that the median progression-free survival was 9.5 months by IRC in liquid biopsy assessed tumors and was 10.8 months in standard biopsy identified tumors. Moreover, the IRC and investigator assessed median duration of response was 12.4 months and 17.1 months among patients whose tumors were evaluated via liquid biopsy, respectively. In those with tissue assessed tumors, the IRC and investigator assessed median DOR was 15.7 and 14.3 months, respectively. The FDA has accepted a supplemental biologics license application for nirotinib in combination with capecitabine for the treatment of patients with HER2-positive metastatic breast cancer who have failed at least two prior lines of HER2-directed therapies. The application is based on findings from the Phase three NALA trial, which showed that the combination of nirotinib and capecitabine led to a 24% reduction in the risk of disease progression or death versus lapatinib plus capecitabine. The hazard ratio for progression-free survival favoring neurotinib was 0.76, and a landmark analysis showed that the PFS curves began to separate after six months with six months PFS rates of 47% versus 38%, one-year rates of 29% versus 15%, and 18-month rates of 16% versus 7% for the neurotinib versus the lapatinib arm, respectively. Additionally, a pre-specified restricted means analysis for PFS was conducted that was limited to a 24-month follow-up. Data showed a mean PFS of 8.8 .8 months for nirotinib compared with 6.6 .6 months for lapatinib. There was a numerical but not a statistically significant overall survival benefit with nirotinib. A pre-specified restricted means analysis showed a mean OS of 24.0 months for the nirotinib arm compared with 22.2 months for the lapatinib arm. This analysis was restricted to a 48-month follow-up. The FDA is scheduled to make a final decision on the application by the end of April 2020. The FDA has granted a fast-track designation to investigational KRAS inhibitor AMG510 for the treatment of patients with KRAS G12C mutated non-small cell lung cancer who received prior therapy. The decision is based on updated phase one data, which showed that AMG510 elicited a 100% disease control rate at the target dose in a valuable patient with KRAS G12C mutant NSCLC. AMG510 is a first in-class investigational agent that selectively and irreversibly targets the KRAS G12C protein. The phase one dose escalation expansion study was conducted in patients with previously treated solid tumors who harbor a KRAS G12C mutation. Additional findings from the phase one study will also be presented at the 2019 ESMO Congress. 
The World Conference on Lung Cancer took place in Barcelona this past week, highlighting the latest therapeutic advances across lung cancer settings. First, the axle inhibitor bemcentinib demonstrated activity in combination with pembrolizumab in patients with advanced non-small cell lung cancer who had no prior exposure to immunotherapy. Results showed that with the combination, the objective response rate confirmed by tissue analysis was 40% and the median overall survival was 12.2 months. Secondly, the combination of drivalumab and chemotherapy showed a statistically significant improvement in patients with untreated extensive stage small cell lung cancer, according to findings from the phase three Caspian trial that were presented at the meeting. The median OS increased from 10.3 months with chemotherapy alone to 13.0 months with the addition of drivalumab, which translated to a 27% reduction in the risk of death. Additionally, data from the phase 1-2 Libretto-001 trial showed that almost 70% of patients with pretreated RET fusion-positive non-small cell lung cancer had objective responses to the RET inhibitor selpercatinib. The median duration of response and median progression-free survival exceeded 1.5 years. Among patients with no prior treatment, selpercatinib elicited an objective response rate of 85%. Finally, treatment with nivolumab was associated with a five-year overall survival rate of 13.4% versus 2.6% with docetaxel in patients with previously treated non-small cell lung cancer, according to long-term pooled efficacy and safety data from the Phase 3 Checkmate 017 and Checkmate 057 trials. This week, we sat down with Dr. Suresh Ram Malingam of the Winship Cancer Institute of Emory University to discuss novel therapy for patients with advanced stage non-small cell lung cancer. Uh, this is a very exciting time for uh, lung cancer field as a whole. We've seen tremendous uh, developments in terms of how we treat patients over the past few years. And from the entire spectrum of early detection to managing a patient with advanced disease, uh, we have good approaches that are evidence-based that can result in improved patient outcomes. Uh, let's talk about metastatic disease, which is the most common disease uh, stage at which patients are diagnosed. In patients with metastatic disease now, we clearly are approaching them in a personalized manner. We look at do these patients have targetable mutations if they have non-squamous histology, and if they have a targetable mutation like EGFR, ALK, BRAF, ROS1, or NTRAC, we give them FDA-approved targeted therapies. If the patients do not have a treatable target, then we treat them with immunotherapy, either by itself or in combination with chemotherapy, and whether you give chemo with immunotherapy depends on PDL1 expression. Higher the PDL1 expression, greater than 50%, we give them pembrolizumab alone for non-small cell lung cancer. If the patient's PDL1 expression is low, we give them chemo plus uh, immunocheckpoint inhibition. What are the next steps? Well, it's a very uh, important uh, phase of the year because we have some major meetings coming up, the World Conference in Lung Cancer in a few days, and then the uh, annual ESMO meeting. Uh, and there are some exciting trials that we're going to hear from these uh, meetings. What I'm looking forward to is to uh, learn about the results of the chemo plus durvalumab data in small cell lung cancer. I'm looking forward to getting an update from the Libretto trial with LOXO-292 in red positive patients. Uh, the overall survival results of FLORA study are going to be presented. We're also looking forward to the Checkmate 227 trial, which is the evaluation of ipilimumab and nivolumab in patients with advanced stage non-small cell lung cancer. Uh, I think the results we're going to hear from these trials will have direct implications for how we manage patients, and I'm happy to discuss uh, the implications uh, for these trials. Not too long ago, lung cancer was approached with a lot of therapeutic nihilism, where physicians and patients didn't feel like even treating lung cancer was uh, worthwhile. We have turned a page on that and we have come a long ways. And now I believe lung cancer is leading the way in terms of developing new treatment options for patients. That is a model for other diseases as well. Uh, be it targeted therapies, be it immune checkpoint inhibition, be it biomarker development. In all these fronts, lung cancer is far ahead and uh, continues to inspire us to think about models that have worked in lung cancer to be translated in other diseases. That's all for today. Thank you for watching Enclave News Network. I'm Gina Columbus.